Okay, we are gonna get going in a few minutes. Um, I do have a few things planned today. So I'm gonna get you to go on like a little scavenger hunt um, before we get going. So if you, and guys at the fire hall, it's okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But um, if you can grab something that can be used instead of a bolster, that would be great. So obviously like I have a traditional yoga bolster, this like long pillow. But if you don't have something like that, um, you can grab a big towel and make a really long roll for yourself. So you can fold the towel maybe in half and then kind of roll it like you would if you were going to the beach. So we have that and then Um, if you can grab, uh, I have traditional yoga blocks, but today if you could grab either a book, if you have a yoga block, that's great, but maybe like a book, um, a book would be great. <laughs> and then if you're someone who's particularly not flexible, um, grab a strap. So it could be like a belt, um, or it could be one of those yoga straps. Sandy, that's perfect. Lots of blankets. <laughs> and towels. <laughs> oh, she was. What does it say about me when I can't find a book? into your chest. And hugging your knees into your chest, you can start to massage your low back a little bit, just stirring some circles, moving your knees in a circular motion massaging the, slump, the small of your back and move in both directions. Good, and then from here, bring your feet down so that your, your feet are actually touching your mat and then move your heels wider than your hips about to the edges of your mat. And then open your arms out into a T and just start to tip your knees from side to side. Letting your knees fall to the right and then letting your knees fall to the left. start to attach your breath to this a little bit. So as you exhale, dropping your knees to one side. As you inhale, bringing your knees back up through center and so on and so forth like that. Just moving from side to side a few more times. Good, and then come back up through center. Walk your feet in a little bit closer so that they're about hips width apart now. 
and reach down, see if you can tickle your heels with your fingertips. And just slightly, ever so slightly, pigeon toe your feet. So your toes are pointing in toward each other just a little bit. And then start to push down through your feet and down through your arms to lift your hips up, coming into this like little bridge. And we'll just hang out here for a second, feeling like your knees, your inner thighs are kind of magnetized toward each other. And then you can start to breathe and you're into your belly. You can actually watch the rise and fall of your belly with your breath. Breathing in, filling your belly, exhaling it, watching it deflate. And then when you're ready with an exhalation, drop your hips down to the mat. Right away, inhale, lift your hips back up. Exhale, lower the hips. Move like this a few more times with your breath. And exhale. And then you can choose to stay right here and continue to move, just raising and lowering the hips like this. Or you might choose to add in the arms. So as your hips rise, now your arms will also rise so that the back of your arms, back of your hands actually touch the floor above your head. And then exhale, arms lower, hips lower. And continuing to move like this. So even though your arms have a farther distance to go than your hips do, can you synchronize all of these movements together? Breath and body synchronize together. Let's do one or two more rounds. And then let your hips come down. Give your knees another hug into your chest. Maybe a little rock from side to side. And then roll onto your right hand side in a fetal position. We'll just take two breaths in this fetal position on the right hand side. And just lay the same way you would as if you were laying in your own bed. Take a few breaths. And then when you're ready, start to press yourself up to a seat. Make your way to a, your hands and your knees. So finding a neutral tabletop position. Lining up your wrists underneath your shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Start to sway the hips a little bit left and right. And then we'll move through a few rounds of cat and cow, dropping the belly, lifting the gaze up with an inhalation. Exhaling, pushing your hands into the ground, rounding through your spine, gazing towards your navel. Keep moving like this, inhaling, inhaling, belly drops, gaze lifts. Exhaling, rounding through the upper back, letting the crown of the head drop down. A few more times on your own. And really using this moment right here to fully solidify the connection between your body and your breath. Carry that through the rest of your practice, even the rest of your day. When you're ready, tuck your toes, send your hips up and back to a downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog, pedal the knees a few times, bend one knee, bend the other. Just allow the hips to sway. So you're kind of opening up through the shoulders, through the back of the legs. Good, and then 
then find a little bit of stillness for a few breaths. So land in stillness, still a, a bend in your knees if you, if you need to have one there. And then just trying to raise your hips as high as you can toward the ceiling. It's okay if the knee, the heels don't come down to the ground. And then from here, take an inhalation, lift your right heel up to the ceiling. And then as you exhale, bend into the right knee, plant the right foot between the palms and drop the left knee down. Untuck the left toes and lift up into a low lunge. So you're just lifting the hands away from the mat, reaching them up toward the ceiling. Staying here for a few breaths. And let's bring our hands down to our, to our torso here. See if you can locate the top of your hip bones with your pinky finger. Just set your pinky finger on the top of your hip bones. And then bring your thumb, see if you can kind of locate your bottom rib. So now I want you to try to draw those two points together. So the space between your fingers will close a little bit. Okay, and then open those points, kind of flare your rib cage. Notice how your hand now splays across your belly. And then close those two points, bring them closer together again. So you want to try to keep that rib to hip connection as we're in this low lunge. Feeling a bit of length come in through the low back. And then re-reach your hands back up to the sky. Nice. Good. From here, we're gonna take a twist. So as you exhale, drop your left hand forward, reach your right hand back. So you're twisting towards your right leg. You can gaze to the side or maybe gaze back over your right thumb. Take an inhale, come back through center. Do that two more times. Inhale, reach your fingertips high. And then take an exhale, plant your palms, framing your front foot, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee up, step back to a downward facing dog. Really press down through your hands here, spread your fingers really wide. Really glue the entire length of the thumb into the mat. Okay, and then take an inhalation, lift your left heel to the ceiling. Take an exhale, bring that left foot between the palms, planting it down, dropping the back knee. Same posture, opposite side. When you're ready, lifting up. Taking a few breaths here. Maybe come back to that feeling of of finding that rib to hip connection. Maybe there's a bit more length coming in through the back when you do that. Continuing to draw that left hip back, bring the right hip forward just a little bit. And pressing down through the center of the left foot to do that. And then take an exhalation, let's take three twists to the left, dropping the left hand back, reaching the right arm forward. Inhale, come back through center. Two more times like that. Inhale. And one more. Inhale. Good, reaching up to the ceiling, and then exhaling, planting your palms, tucking your back toes, lifting your back knee. Step up to the top of your mat, folding over your legs. Again, just like last week, bend your knees as much as you need to to actually make contact with your thighs, with your belly. 
Allow the crown of your head to be heavy. Maybe nod a little bit, say yes and no. And then come up halfway, bringing your spine to parallel with the ground, reaching the crown of your head forward, sit bones reach back. Exhale, fold over your legs. Do that two more times, inhale. And exhale, one more. Good, from here we're gonna roll ourselves up to stand. So the knees will be the last thing to straighten. But we're just gonna kind of, kind of roll up through the vertebrae of our spine like a string of pearls. Just stacking one pearl on top of the next, on top of the next, on top of the next. Our shoulders will stack, our head will stack, and then our knees will straighten. Coming into mountain pose. Allow your eyes to close. And just breathe in here. Good. So let's kind of rock the weight of our body toward our toes. And then rock the weight of your body back towards your heels. And do that a few times. slowly making those rocks less and less extreme until you actually land with your weight evenly distributed across the bottom of your feet. You kind of find this center point. And then I'd like you to just notice how when you press down even more through your feet, you kind of work with gravity, press down through your feet and lift the crown of your head even higher away from the ground. And then from here, we'll move through a few rounds, through a few vinyasas. So if you don't know what a vinyasa is, it's okay. I'll guide us through one or two, and then we'll move through one independently. So as you're ready, take an inhale, lift your fingertips to the sky. As you exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold, plant your palms, step back to a plank. Take your plank from your toes or your knees, inhale here. Exhale, lower all the way down to the ground, taking a baby cobra, reaching your heart forward and through. Exhale, lower. Plant your palms. With an inhale, lift up to a plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Holding in downward facing dog for a few breaths. And then when you're ready, gaze forward at your palms. Walk, step, or float your feet to the top of your mat and fold forward. Take an inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Come all the way up to stand. Lead with your heart. Press through your feet. Come all the way up, reaching your fingertips around and up. And then exhale, pull the palms down in front of your heart. Land back in Tadasana. Good. Take a moment here, we'll move through two more rounds. So if you kind of know where you're going with vinyasas, go ahead and take yourself through two more rounds. Otherwise, I'm gonna guide one more so you can, you can choose. And if you're moving at a different pace than me, go ahead and embrace that. When you're ready, inhale, lift your fingertips high. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold, plant your palms, step back to a plank. Inhale here. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, baby cobra, bhujangasana. Exhale, lower. Inhale, plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Holding in downward facing dog for three breaths.
when you're ready, gazing at your palms, stepping up to the top of your mat and folding forward. Inhaling, lifting up halfway, exhaling and folding. Come all the way up to stand. Exhale, Tadasana. All right, we'll move through one more. If you get lost, just gaze at me. I'm also gonna be moving through it. So when you're ready on your own time, we'll meet back in Tadasana in a few moments. When you're ready, step your left foot to the back of your mat, setting up for warrior two. Before you enter warrior two, just take a peek in, make sure your front heel is intersecting with the arch of your back foot. And then take a bend through your right knee and expand out through the arm. Good, hang out here. Really stacking your shoulders over your hips and reaching out through your fingertips. And then from here, let's turn our fingertips up toward the ceiling. So we're kind of pressing out, our palms are pressing out now. And really spread your fingers out wide. You'll feel this kind of opening, kind of little stretch through your forearms, through your fingers. Let that go. And then take an inhalation. Let the left arm drop down the left leg. Peel the right arm up toward the ceiling. Exhale back, warrior two. We'll do that twice more. Inhaling, peeling up. Exhale, warrior two. One more like that. Exhale. Good, land in your warrior two. Take a few more breaths. We'll be here for three more breaths. And then as you're ready, bring your hands to your hips. Straighten through that front knee. Good, turn all 10 toes to face the long end of your mat. So you're sideways now, become a big star. So just reaching out through all of your limbs. And then take an exhale, plant the left palm and reach the right hand to the ceiling. So you're twisting open toward that right side of your body. Stacking the shoulders, trying to keep the hips squared. Inhale, come all the way up. Good. Moving to the opposite side. Exhale, right arm plants, reaching the left arm up. Inhale, come back up through center. Move through this a few more times. Exhaling, twisting to the side. Inhale, coming up, and switching. Really use your breath here. Your breath is a tool. Use your breath, exhaling to twist, inhaling to lift up. I'd 
like you to twist one more time to both sides. Twist one more time to both sides. Good. And come up. Turn your left toes to the small end of your mat. So we're taking warrior two on the opposite side. Bend into your left knee. Expand out through the arms. Take a peek and make sure you can see the big toe of your left foot. Oftentimes, oftentimes our knees want to like splay in. So see if you can peel that knee back so you can actually see your big toe. And then three times we'll move through Exalted Warrior. So when you're ready, inhale, lift your left hand to the ceiling. Let your right hand drop down. Exhale, warrior two. Two more times like that. When you're ready, bring your hands to your hips, straighten through your front knee. And then turn all ten toes to face the long end of your mat once again. And we'll just heel toe our feet in, coming back to a mountain pose. Okay, so I'm going to turn this camera up so you can see me a little bit better. So grab a hold of your book or your block. And if you're not a reader, then find an object that's flat. There's gold in my office. Oh, 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 there's gold in Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of gym, brain, and shoulder mobility. So have one, one hand, the block in one hand, or the book in one hand, and turn your block out to the side. Okay, and we're going to try not to drop the block as we move all the way around our bodies until we're at the same position we started. Okay, do it again, turning your block out, and then it comes around and overhead, then it kind of reaches around your body, and all the way back to its starting position. Nice. So you don't want to grab the block like this. That's um, cheating. <laughs> don't cheat. Keep your hand really flat, and do it a few more times. If you drop the block, then you lose. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, and let's move in the opposite direction. So now instead of turning the block out, we're going to turn the block in and around and overhead. Okay, and switch sides. So I'll just put the block on the opposite side and try in one direction. And then try to see if you can keep your hips and the rest of your body as stable as possible. 
So the least amount you move, you have to move your hips and your shoulders and wiggle around, the better. So really try to isolate this movement as much as you can in the shoulder. And then switch directions. And if you want to like really level up here, you can grab a hold of two blocks <laughs> and you can try with both, maybe in opposite directions. Okay, when you're all done, just let that go. Drop your blocks. And then come up to the top of your mat once again. And when you're ready, take an inhalation, lift your fingertips to the sky, and then exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Plant your palms, step back to a plank. And then from your plank, move into a downward facing dog. Take a few breaths in your downward facing dog. And then let's drop our knees to the ground. Bring your big toes together to touch. Widen your knees to the edges of your mat. And sink your hips back to your heels. Bow your heart down. Child's pose. It can be really nice to allow your forehead to rest on something solid. So if your forehead's not touching the ground, maybe stacking a couple of fists or bringing your book that you used underneath your forehead so that you can roll your forehead back and forth across your mat and release any tension that may be living there. Send your breath into the back of your body as much as you can. Let your hips be really, really heavy. And then let's pick up the head and the heart a few inches away from the mat. Walk both of your hands over to the left side. So you're kind of framing your left knee. And then bow your heart back down. When you're here, really press into your right palm to keep your right hip really heavy. And then can you think about lengthening through the left side of your body just as much as the right side of your body? Mm. 
moving to the opposite side. Inhale to pick your head and your heart away from the mat. Move your hands over to the right side and bow back down. back through center and we'll just realign the vertebrae of our spine in center for a few breaths. Bowing down in center. And then if you'd like to, you can bring your palms together to touch like a prayer. And then bend into your elbows to bring the backs of your thumbs to the nape of your neck. So your thumbs will kind of touch your hairline on your neck. From here, extend your arms back out and come into a tabletop position. Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. Move through a few rounds of cat and cow. Okay, and then extend your left foot to the back of your mat so that the left toes actually come down to your mat. And then press into your palms to kind of send that left heel back as if the left heel could touch the floor behind you. And really straighten through that left leg. Press that left thigh up to the ceiling. And then from here, um, lift the left toes away from the mat so that they're in line with the hip. Bend through the left knee and turn that, that thigh so that it's parallel with the floor to kind of look like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. And then bring that left knee as close as you can toward that left bicep and set the left foot down on the outside of your left palm. Maybe walk that right knee back a little bit, creating a longer stance. And then from here, you have a few options. You can stay right here and hang out and breathe if this is enough in this left hip and the, the right hip flexor. Or you might choose to start to kind of peel open. So maybe you're kind of choosing to to roll onto the pinky toe edge of your left foot. I don't know the best way to so you can see this. So now I'm kind of rolling onto the pinky toe edge of my left foot. Now my knee is splaying out. And I'm remembering to peel my toes back towards my knee. So I'm just trying to protect that knee joint as much as possible. And then from here, again, your choice you can bow your heart down, or you might choose to take a bind. Maybe you bend into your back knee and reach around and grab a hold of that foot. And here's where that strap might come in handy. If you are binding and you can't quite reach, you can grab a hold of your strap, loop it around your foot and bring it closer. And then if you do have this connection, then it's kind of a, kind of a matter of, of surrendering. So then maybe you walk your right hand out a little bit wider and you just allow your heart to kind of peel open. You can even open up your throat, kind of nestle your shoulder blades on your back. And 
Okay, but it's quite intense. It's quite a deep opening. We'll take one or two more breaths here. And when you come out, don't slingshot your foot. Allow your foot to drop down slowly. Plant both of your palms. Plant the left foot down. And then we'll move into pigeon from here. So from here, you're kind of already set up. Just heel toe your left foot across your mat towards your right hand and then drop the knee down. Okay, so this is like full expression of the pose. Hips are super open. Obviously, we're not all set up this way, so you can bring your left foot and kind of tuck it into your right hip, okay, so that the, the shin doesn't have to be parallel. And then drop your hips down. So just a note here with pigeon. Um, try to keep your pelvis as stable as possible. So if your left hip is like really far away from the ground, you can actually shove a towel or a blanket under your left hip. So if I was kind of like this, and I'm kind of, my hips are off center because I can't quite keep my hips stable. Maybe just shove a, a towel under here to keep your pelvis uh, straight and the integrity of your pelvis still there. And then bow down. See if there's anywhere in your body that you are clenching and gripping unnecessarily. Loosen your jaw, smooth out the skin across your cheeks and your forehead. Let your shoulders be soft. Unclench your fists. Take one more breath here. And then start to lift up when you're ready. There's no super graceful way to come out of this. So just do what you need to to get some blood flow back. Maybe lifting up to a down dog. Maybe just hanging out in tabletop. Take a few moments. And then meet back in a tabletop position when you're ready. Extend your right foot to the back of your mat. Let the toes come down and again press back so that you're pressing the heel back behind you. So you probably feel this all the way down the right leg, maybe, maybe even into the right foot. And then lift the foot away from the mat, and again, uh, bend through the knee, and bring that knee as close as you can to the right bicep, hover there and then set the foot down to the outside of the right palm. Maybe creating a little bit of a longer stance and then this is kind of choose your own adventure again. So you can choose to just hang out here, maybe bowing down. Maybe you're choosing to again roll onto the pinky toe edge of that right foot and kind of move the location of this stretch. 
if you're going there, choosing to bow down again, or choosing to take that bind. If you're taking a bind, try not to collapse your heart. Okay, so try to peel your shoulders back as if you're kind of pulling your heart back with the strength of your leg. So kicking back and peeling your heart open. One more breath, guys. Okay, come out, don't slingshot your foot. Come back, plant your palms. Plant the right foot down. And then come into pigeon, opposite side. So heel toeing that foot to the opposite, to the left foot, letting the knee come down. And then adjusting as you need. Propping your hips up with a pillow if necessary. And then bowing down through the heart when you're ready. Your mind is going to try really, really hard to not be here, to not feel the sensation. Try to bring it back to this moment and focus on the breath. Again, using the breath as a tool. Breathing through sensation. We'll be here for three more breaths. If there's something that you've been holding on to throughout the duration of this posture, let it go for the last two breaths. And as you're ready, starting to lift up, peeling your heart away from the ground. And again, getting blood flow back in any way that you need. Down dog, tabletop, child's pose, anything you need. Or your knees down if you're in down dog and make your way onto your back slowly. If you have that rolled up towel or bolster close by, bring it, bring it in close within arm's reach. 
Make your way onto your back. Give your knees a hug into your chest. And again, maybe a little massage for your low back, moving your knees around in a circular motion, both directions if possible. And then set the feet back down and, and grab a hold of that roll that you have, the blanket or the towel or the bolster. And um, press into your feet, start to lift your hips away from the, the earth and slide that roll underneath your sacrum on your low back and set your hips back down. And it might take a moment or two just fine tuning the placement of that roll on your sacrum and then you'll find a place that feels really good. It feels kind of spacious and lengthening. So we're kind of thinking about um, sending the tailbone down on the other side of the roll. Just a little bit. And then you can open up your arms on either side of your body, maybe palms facing up toward the ceiling. And we're just hanging out here. If you don't have a roll under your hips, what you can do is bring your heels really wide, feet and heels really wide, and allow your knees to fall in toward each other. So that just allows a little bit of traction and weight through your pelvis. If you'd like to stay here, you can if you're super, super comfortable. Otherwise, press into your feet, move that roll out. And then again, everybody take your heels really wide. Take your heels really wide. And let both of your knees fall to the right. Open your arms out into a T position and let your gaze rest over your left palm. So your knees have gone right, gaze has gone left. Bring your knees back up through center and switch sides.
Bring your knees up through center. And from here, we're going to extend all of our limbs out. Nice and straight. And take a final resting pose here. Shavasana. Allowing all of your body, all of the muscles in your body to relax and let go. Not holding or gripping anywhere. Moving now from thinking and doing to feeling and being. And taking rest. I'll come and get you in a few minutes. Starting to deepen the breath again. And starting to wake yourself up. Finding a little bit of movement through the body again. You can start very small by rolling out your wrists and your ankles. Gradually allow the movement to start to spread through the rest of your body. Bending your knees, bending your elbows. Waking your body up in any way that feels really, really good and really, really natural. Maybe taking a good morning stretch, lifting the arms overhead and pointing the toes become really, really long. Maybe becoming a little ball really tight. And then roll onto your right hand side, coming back to a fetal position. Use your right arm as a pillow for your head. And take a few breaths here.
And then as you're ready, start to lift yourself up to a seat. We'll just take a moment in our seat, keeping the eyes gently closed. Maybe just a slight bow of your chin towards your chest. I'm taking a moment here, honoring yourself. And then the final piece of the puzzle is to honor one another. Thank you all so much.